Facebook family and friends. Today it is Sunday. It's October 7th, the year is 2018. And I am at the Firekeepers Casino here in Battle Creek, Michigan. I've been in Michigan, in the past few weeks I've been traveling through Indiana and Michigan visiting family members. My cousin unexpectedly died. He was sick and he died. He was only 40 years of age. He um, died, and I don't know. He uh, got sick and died, and so he had to. We had a, a funeral for him this past Saturday, yesterday. So his burial is tomorrow. His funeral was yesterday. They're burying him tomorrow in Decatur, Michigan, where he kind of grew up. So it was kind of like a mini family reunion. Seeing my family members and friends. Uh, I got a lot of time to reflect on just a lot of stuff. And sometimes, you know, getting out of Atlanta kind of is, I haven't been up north this far, up north to these parts of Michigan. I'm in Battle Creek right now, Battle Creek, Michigan. I haven't been up here in these parts since my grandmother passed away. So I'm at the casino and I just won 500 bucks. I'm back here in the room like, okay, I'm going to go gambling again. I'm like, I'm just trying to hold on to this chair to keep from running back downstairs to gamble. But I came to the clues that I am going to go back. Um, you, know, you sit there, as soon as you plop down into the machine, I, 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 you win 500 bucks as you're sitting there playing. It's like, boy, I better take this money and go upstairs. So, uh, excuse me, I'm kind of sleepy. I've had a few drinks. I'm over here right now having me a vodka and cranberry. So, yep, I am in Battle Creek. It was nice to get away. One thing I will say about this trip up north, outside of Gary, Indiana, woo, you know, sometimes you forget how black Atlanta is because you see black folks everywhere in Atlanta. Then you know, when I got on this road trip going to Tennessee and Kentucky, Kentucky? Yeah, Kentucky, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana, I didn't see no black folks. When I got off the exits to get gas and stuff like that, it was a ghost town. Nobody to be found nowhere. Now I'm at this casino here. It's predominantly white. And I was in Decatur, Michigan, where my uh, cousin will be buried tomorrow. It was pretty white there, too. Lots and lots of white folks. Very few black folks. The hotel I stayed at last night, I think we were the only black people there, the ones that were there for the uh, my, my cousins and everybody who was in town for the funeral. So it was interesting, to say the least. I had a nice time. Um... It was nice to see um, it was just nice to see family members and see what they were up to and how everything was going. Um, nice to have them it was just, I, but I can honestly say this has probably been one of the saddest trips I've taken in a long time, not just because of Joe's funerals, just seeing the difference between how white Americans live and how black Americans live. You know, um, many of the places where I drove through, you know, I saw big, beautiful houses, contemporary homes, and just all kinds of stuff. And white folks was having just a very good life, but where the black folks were living at, it's just poverty. You know, I saw a lot of, uh, when I got to Indianapolis, I saw some, one side of Indianapolis looked beautiful, then I got to the, to the side of South, the side of town where I guess the black folks live at, and it's kind of rough looking in there down in the in, in Dallas. Of course, when I got to Gary, Indiana, it was disappointing to see how far Gary, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana has gone down. It's just terrible. It was not. There was nothing nice about Gary. I'll tell you that. And I grew up in Gary, and I took some pictures. I'm gonna try to upload some of those pictures on this video. And I took some pictures of my house, the home that I grew up in. In the 70s, Gary was a thriving city. Um, and in the 80s, it started to die. By the 90s and 2000s, dead as a doorknob. And so I'm 48 and I grew up in Gary, Indiana. I was born in Gary. We left there in about maybe 85, 84, 85, somewhere up in there. Maybe it had to be 84, 1984, 1985. Um, to, so Gary is just a, like a war zone. The streets were horrible. The schools were abandoned that I went to. Um, just 
a thriving neighborhood of black folks is just is gone. It's not to me. I don't know if even if Gary can be brought back to life. I was talking to some of my cousins and family members that live there who still live there. And I have a lot of family members that still live there. I don't know why, but hey, I couldn't do it. You know, I'd have to have a couple million bucks to sit there, Gary. I mean, shush. They would try to clean that doggone place up. But it was, um, I don't know. Gary, but this has been kind of a depressing trip. Then the weather has been kind of true. Depressing because I'm just tired of seeing all the poverty in my family. It's just sad that um, I don't have any children, so... For example, for me, this trip was a chance to get away from Atlanta. You know, not having children for me has been, um, has kept me out of poverty, I'll tell you that much. I can, I can do what I want to do financially because it's just me. You know, Earl has his own responsibilities and we have two dogs. Well, one dog, because one is dead now. He dead and gone. Vegas is gone. <laughs> But not having any children and any responsibilities financially like that has made my life a whole lot easier. So I'm looking at all these kids running around. And it just leaves me kind of speechless to poverty, the despair, the unemployment. You know, so. It's, it's, it's sad. You know, I don't even know what to say. Um, because you see poverty, you can see it in your own family, which I know, I know it's been there for years. I just think black people, blacks in particular, need to start thinking before they bring children into the world. Um, while I was here, there was a story in Atlanta of a young of a family that was homeless living in their car, a husband and wife and four children living in a car, and insurance had lapsed, and some police officers helped them to pay for the vehicle, uh, the insurance so they could stay in the car, eventually helped me find a place to stay. I'm just sick of, you know, it's just like, okay, you don't have a place to live, but y'all got all these kids. And I'm sure that, that their living situation has probably been like that for quite some time, even before those children got there. There was some uncertainty in their life. I know my relatives who had children, my own sisters had children, and there was a whole hell of a lot of uncertainty going on in their lives. But they were, they didn't, you know, I just don't understand it. But again, maybe because I see things differently than they do. But I'm not going to bring no children into her and I barely got a place to live. That's crazy. That's not going to make no sense. Why would I bring children into this world and I barely got a place to live? What would be the point? <laughs> I don't get it. I wouldn't do it. My sister used to tell me, well, poor people want children, too. By the time she's pregnant, I'm like, what is going on with you? Poor people want children, too. And she was right. I guess poor people do want children, too. Well, this poor nigga didn't want no children, too, because I was not about to go down that path. And I'm glad I'm okay. So... It's going to be a short video because I, I got to go down to the car and grab something out of my car. I just wanted to give you all an update as to where I was the past week. Um, hopefully I'll be back in Atlanta in the next few days. Drive. I drove actually too. It's a nice road trip. I had a blast. The road trip part of it, I love road trips. Some people don't like getting their car and driving. I love getting on the road, putting on my music. I listen to my Fleetwood Mac, the Rhythmics. Tina Turner, I'm an 80s baby. I was listening to, I was born in the 70s, but I love 80s music. So I was listening to the music that I love to listen to all the way up the road. In fact, Fleetwood Mac is going to be at this casino tomorrow, and I'm almost tempted to stay here one more night just to see them in concert. I mean, I'm going to get home until Tuesday. I'm going to figure out if there's any tickets available, what it's going to cost to me to stay here at this hotel one more night, and maybe stay and see Fleetwood Mac. But I'm in this luxury hotel here at the at the casino. This place is nice. Beautiful. It's very nice. So anyway, like I said, this is going to be a short video because I'm trying to get back down to this car to grab something. But some reason my video is kind of messing up. So 
don't know what's going on. Maybe because the light is kind of dark in this room or something. I, don't know, I can't figure it out. But hey. So, anyway, like I said, today it is. It is Sunday, October 7th, exactly 7.35 p.m. And, uh, excuse me. Ooh, I'm over here drinking this liquor. I'm going to get my fat ass up and go down to this car. Grab a fan. Maybe watch a movie on this TV that keep me from going downstairs. But I am going to go by that machine when I want that $500 just to visit and see what's going on over there. And, um, try to have some fun. I'm actually here to, uh, by myself because my cousins, are, everybody else is in the cater. They didn't want to come in. They had no money to spend here. I don't blame them. But one of my, I have some cousins here in Battle Creek, so I'm hoping I will see them tonight. We'll see. They said they, I need to call over there and see what they have. They said they were coming over to the casino, but I haven't heard from them. So it's still early. It's only 7.30. And, um, well, if you like my videos, click like. Share them with family. Tell me something. Tell me if y'all think I'm wrong on this. Is, this, is it the children? Uh, is poverty being caused by people having children they just can't afford? Would it be easier if, for people to survive if, was, if they didn't have these kids they can't afford to have and feed and clothe and take care of? Maybe am I? Is that too simplistic of a view of it? I'm just, you know, I'm just curious. Am I looking at it the wrong way? I just think, me personally, me not having any children has made my life a hell of a lot easy. I am concerned as I go through the aging process over the next 30, 40 years, if I live the next 30, 40 years, who gonna take care of my black ass? But, you know, I just wonder. Anyway, I'm out of here. Enjoy your Sunday. I look forward to reading you all's responses. I'm out and enjoy your Sunday night.